In today's video, we're going to talk about celestial navigation, how you can use a tool like this to figure out where you are. Welcome back to our series on 17th century ships navigation. We've previously discussed piloting and dead reckoning. Piloting is navigation done primarily near land by observing landmarks and water depth. It would not be as useful in the middle of the ocean. Dead reckoning is a means of navigation that allows sailors to determine their current position relative to a previously known position by keeping track of their course and heading and the distance that they travel. The longer you track your dead reckoning, the less accurate it will be as your errors compound. Today, we will be covering celestial navigation. Celestial navigation is finding your way using heavenly bodies like the sun, moon, or stars. 17th century navigators would use the angle of the sun or north star to determine their latitude. As we shall see, celestial navigation helped navigators to make up for some of the limitations of piloting and dead reckoning and gave 17th century sailors a better understanding of where they were. Since it's daytime, we'll focus this video on the star that is visible during the day, the sun. Before we can use the sun to figure out where we are, we need to know some things about the sun. If you went to an elementary school in the 20th or 21st century, you probably know that the Earth revolves around the sun. While Copernicus had published his heliocentric theory of a sun-centered solar system in the mid-16th century, this theory was not widely accepted yet. The great thing for celestial navigators is that it doesn't matter if the Earth moves around the sun or the sun moves around the Earth. What matters is that from our perspective on the Earth's surface, we can see the sun move throughout the sky in a predictable way throughout the day and year. Every morning, the sun rises in the east and climbs higher and higher in the sky until it reaches its highest point at local apparent noon. Because the Earth doesn't take exactly 24 hours to rotate, and we have time zones and daylight savings time that isn't always going to be at 12 o'clock. Today, local apparent noon will be a few minutes after noon by a watch. As we've discussed in previous videos, 17th century navigators did not have accurate timekeeping pieces, but to find local apparent noon, you don't need to know the exact time. When it's almost noon, you can go ahead and start measuring the angle between the sun's position in the sky and the zenith point directly over your head. As the sun rises, that number will continue to get smaller and smaller every time you measure it. When the sun begins to fall in the sky, your measured angle will start to get bigger, and you know that local apparent noon is past. So whatever your smallest angle was, that's the closest you got to local apparent noon, when the sun was at its highest point for the day. The reason that you want to take your reading at that specific time of day is that local apparent noon is the time when the sun is directly above the same meridian as you. For us at Jamestown, this means the sun will be always be directly south of our position. It is not necessary for us to know what meridian we're on or what our longitude is. If if the sun and I are in the same meridian, I can use its position in the sky to calculate a line of position at a right angle to that meridian, which will be a line of latitude. Now we have the angle between the sun's position at its highest point and the zenith point directly over our heads. What do we do with that information? First, we need to figure out another number called the declination. One way of thinking about the declination is that if you were standing on the Earth's equator at local apparent noon, the declination would be how far north or south of you the sun would be from your zenith point. We're filming this video on January 27th. Today the declination is about 18 degrees 40 minutes, and I know this because the internet told me so. And a bunch of astronomers did that uh, math to figure that out. 400 years ago, a ship's navigator would find the declination basically the same way I did by looking up in a book. Almanacs and navigation texts would often contain declination tables that will project the declination for every day several years into the future. Ultimately, what we want to know is our latitude, how far north or south of the equator we are. Currently, it is winter in Jamestown, Virginia, so the sun is over the southern hemisphere. If we subtract the angle between the sun and the equator, the declination, from the angle between our zenith point and the sun, the result will be the angle between our current position and the equator, which is our latitude. 
So to go a little bit more in depth into the concept of declination, um, we can draw a two-dimensional representation of the Earth here on our chalkboard. Um, and because this is a two-dimensional rep representation, this circle I've drawn is, uh, you can imagine, be just a cross-section of the Earth. So this is a line of merid a meridian, a line of longitude um, uh, a a around the Earth. So if we had a line that cuts across that, right at the center, that would be our equator. Um, now, if we imagine that this is where we're standing uh, here, uh, somewhere on the Earth's surface, we know we're north of the equator, we're somewhere up here, um, and we have a line that goes from the center of the Earth straight through our head up into infinity. That's our zenith point we were talking about earlier. Um, so what we want to find out is this angle right here, our angle between us and the equator. So how far north of the equator we are. Now what we're going to use to find that is the sun. And we know the sun is somewhere out here, out in space. Um, and that um, uh, sun we know is south of the equator. And uh, the, if we're measuring the angle between um, us and the, uh, the sun, this is the angle that we've measured, right? But what we want to find out is this smaller angle right here. So that's how declination helps us out. Declination is the angle between the sun and the equator. So if we subtract the declination from that big measurement that we're getting, then what we're going to be left with is going to be this angle right here, which will tell us our line of latitude, how far north of the equator we are. So our next step in figuring out where we are is to actually find that angle between the sun's position and our zenith point directly over our head. So there are a few tools that would have been available to sailors in 16, English sailors in 1607 coming over to Virginia, and one of those would have been the astrolabe. The astrolabe uh, has um, it's actually been around for a very long time. Um, it has been found on shipwrecks from the late 15th century. So when Columbus came over in 1492, um, there's a very good chance he had an astrolabe with him. Um, now the way the astrolabe is going to work is uh, you can hold on uh, to the, the top of your astrolabe here by using this ring or using a string attached to the ring and that's just going to ensure that your scale that goes around the outside of the astrolabe has the center, um, the zero point, um, pointing at your zenith directly over your head. And now all we need to do is get the alidade, this kind of arrow here, to point directly at the sun. So we do that using these plates here, and you'll see these plates have holes in them. Um, and if you get the sun to shine through the, uh, the hole in the top plate and align uh, with the hole in the bottom plate, then what you're doing is ensuring that your alidade is pointing directly at the sun, exactly where you, where you want it to be pointing, and then you can come read your angle on the scale here. Um, so if you hold on to the top here, um, and then just get your uh, uh, astrolabe to point directly at the sun there, you just want to adjust your alidade until that, uh, that um, pinprick of light is right at the lower plate, and then we're going to come read our angle. Um, so looking at our angle right here, looks like we're just past 55 degrees, looks like we're right at the 56 degree mark. So now we know that the angle between the sun and our zenith point is 56 degrees. And so what we're going to do is subtract the declination that we were talking about earlier. So our declination is 18 degrees 40 minutes. So if you subtract 18 degrees 40 minutes from 56 degrees, you get 37 degrees 20 minutes. Um, we're actually here at Jamestown Settlement at right about 37 degrees 12 minutes. So we're only eight 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 minutes um, off of our actual latitude, which really not bad that's that's pretty fantastic um uh one minute of latitude is one nautical mile um which is uh, uh 1.15 statute miles so if you're one uh, uh you're eight eight nautical miles away from when you thought you were um you're you're pretty close you could probably see on a good day you can see see what you're looking for problem with the astrolabe is getting eight minutes away from your actual um actual latitude that's pretty lucky because what you'll notice with our scale here is these uh, degree markers are really close together and you're only measuring to the nearest degree. So getting eight minutes is, is good, um, but you could be a whole degree off of what your actual latitude is. And now instead of eight nautical miles, you may be um, 60 nautical miles, almost 70 miles away from where you thought you were. 
So Astrolabe um, has that really big drawback. Another drawback is you're on a ship rocking back and forth. Um, it's The Astrolabe is gonna be rocking. It's gonna be really hard to get a very accurate measurement. So there are other tools that are developed um, that are gonna be a little bit easier to use, give you a more accurate number. The next tool I want to discuss is the cross staff. So the cross staff is developed in the early, sometime in the early 1500s, and it seems like if you read navigation text from the time period, um, this is probably the the most commonly used nav uh, celestial navigation tool for an English navigator in 1607. Um, but the cross staff has a, a couple advantages over the astrolabe. Um, it's just it's not um, uh, not going to have that pendulum effect. So it's going to be a little bit easier to use on board a ship, though obviously still challenging for. A Ship rocking back and forth to get accurate measurements um, and the other big advantage is this scale here is just a little bit more spread out um, so you're actually able to measure fractions of a degree with with the cross staff um, now the scale that you use does depend on kind of the time of year and the the, um, the height of the, the angle um, that you're that you're measuring um, but depending on the time of year you can actually get within a sixth of a degree um, with with the cross staff um, so um, uh, if you're measuring to the nearest sixth of the degree the nearest 10 minutes, hopefully you're getting within 5 to 10 nautical miles on a consistent basis of your actual latitude. Um, now the cross staff does have some disadvantages as well though. So I'm going to explain how the cross staff works um, and then I'm going to point out to you kind of what are what are some of the downsides of this tool. So it has just very simple instrument. It has our scale printed on, on, on the, um, the staff itself and then we have this movable piece called the transom. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to turn and face the sun. You basically are going to stare at the sun. You get the sun right at the top of your transom there. You want to line the horizon right up with the bottom. And then you can use the screw here to kind of um, fix your transom there. And then you can come, come here and you're going to read your angle. Um, obviously, you probably noticed downside is you're staring at the sun. You got a pointy stick right next to your eyeball and a ship rocking back and forth. And you're also kind of trying to focus on the horizon and the sun at the same time, um, which causes a problem called parallax. It's almost like an obstacle illusion that you're going to have when you're, you're trying to focus on two distant objects. Um, so all of those are going to um, uh, uh, make uh, be big problems for, for, for use of the cross staff. But if it gives you an accurate measurement, um, they're, they're still going to still gonna be using this um, um, pr pretty regularly. Um, you'll, you will notice as well with the cross staff that technically what you're measuring with this is the angle between the horizon and the sun instead of the sun and your zenith point. Um, so you're not, you're not directly measuring the angle that you want, but it's not really a problem at all because those are complementary angles. So between the horizon and your zenith point is going to be 90 degrees. So if you subtract your, ang your angle you're measuring from 90, then you're going to get that angle that you want, that angle between the sun and its zenith point. Um, and some cross staffs like this one here would actually print both scales on them. So this top number is the actual angle we're measuring. Um, the bottom number, um, just with some kind of easy arithmetic has already um, already done for you, is going to be that complementary angle that we actually want. The newest tool that would have been available to the English coming over in 1607 is the backstaff. So John Davis, an English navigator, he's the first one to describe the backstaff in his book Seaman Secrets uh, that was printed in the 1590s. Um, and the backstaff has uh, several advantages over the cross staff that John Davis talks about. He talks about um, uh, not requiring you to stare upon the sun or place a stick upon your eye. Um, and he also mentions it's solving the problem of parallax. And the way that the backstaff does that is instead of staring at the sun, you're going to turn around and as the name suggests, you're going to put the sun at your back. You're going to have the sun behind you. And then you're actually going to use the shadows from the sun to measure its angle. So I want to look through the sighting piece on our, our back staff here. I'm going to line up the horizon um, with my horizon vein here. And once I get those lined up, essentially what I'm ensuring is that my tool is, is perfectly level. So once I have my tool level by keeping my um, sighting vein and my horizon vein lined up with each other, um, then I want to get the shadow cast by the sun on our shadow vein here to line up with the, um, with the horizon as well. Um, so you have actually two scales on the back staff. You have kind of a larger gross scale here, and then you have a more fine scale here, and you're actually gonna add these two arcs together to get your final answer. So what I will do is kind of preset 
um, uh, preset this this uh, um, uh, uh, arc with the larger numbers here at something a nice even round number like 40 degrees and then when I do my fine adjusting on um, my, my finer scale here um, I can actually get to um, the uh, sixth of a degree with this finer scale or as we talked about um, within five to ten nautical miles of, of my actual latitude so I line up the hori um, horizon vein with the horizon. I get the shadow cast by the shadow transom here to line up with the horizon as well. I just adjust here until all of those, um, the horizon and the shadow are all lined up right on that same line there. And then I read the, the numbers that I have on these two arcs. I add them together and it's going to tell me basically the same thing the cross staff did, the same thing the astrolabe did, just a little um, a little more accurately the, um, and a little bit less damage to, to, to my retina. Um, it's going to tell me the angle between the sun's position in the sky and that zenith point directly over my head. And once I know that number, as we discussed, I'm going to subtract our declination. That's going to tell me the latitude um, that we are currently at. Um, and uh, that's going to be really useful um, for, for figuring out where we are and finding our way across the ocean. So celestial navigation would have been a really important tool in the 17th century navigator's toolbox um, when they're trying to figure out where they are as they cross an ocean like the Atlantic Ocean on the way here to Jamestown, Virginia. Um, unfortunately, celestial navigation has some drawbacks. It's not going to be enough just by itself. So. Um, it, on it's a cloudy day like today it's going to be hard to get a good reading of the sun or the north star um, and so there might be days or weeks at a time where you're not able to get a good accurate reading using celestial navigation and even when you can get a good reading of the sun um, celestial navigation is mainly only telling you your latitude so it's telling you how far north or south of the equator you are so in this case, uh, we know we're 37 degrees, um, 37 degrees, 12 minutes north of the equator. So we could be here in Jamestown, Virginia, um, or we could be out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We could be in China. We're not really sure. We're somewhere on that line of position that wraps all the way around the globe. So navigators are going to use celestial navigation, but in conjunction as well as um, piloting and dead reckoning. So celestial navigation is probably telling your best estimate of your latitude out in the middle of the ocean. Dead reckoning is going to be generally what they're going to rely on to give them their best estimate of their westward progress, how far they've, uh, they've actually traveled to the west. Um, and then anytime they're near land, piloting is going to be um, probably their most accurate um, understanding of where they are using landmarks um, and uh, the clues around them that they can observe to try to figure out where they are. And all of these tools together 400 years ago, the English are reliably able to wait to find their way across the ocean. They're able to find the Chesapeake Bay on this first voyage. The, the place where they wanted to establish their colony and every journey after that pretty much they're able to find Jamestown settlement and keep that colony supp supplied. Um, if you've enjoyed learning about celestial navigation, please let us know. Um, definitely let us know if there's any other topics um, um, about um, 17th century navigation or, or ships and sailing or anything else uh, um, uh, about um, Jamestown or um, Yorktown that you would like to learn more about. Um, we, we'd love to hear from you.